Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at how to create a clean, professional looking render of our 3D models with V-Ray and Maya. We will set up a backdrop, camera, lights, and create a turntable animation to present our models. So with that, let's get started. So here we are in Maya, we have our character all modeled, textured, and we're ready to render him. Alright, we're going to be using Maya 2020 and V-Ray Next for this tutorial, but you'll be able to follow along as I'm not using anything uh, exclusive to V-Ray Next. So, the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and create a polygon primitive and just create a plane. I go ahead and just start out with just giving this a height and width of 1 by 1, scale it up. And this is simply going to be our backdrop. So I'll go ahead and just scale this out until we get a nice size. And I'll just go ahead and type in values like maybe by 500 and then that'll be wide enough. I'll go ahead and right click, go into edge mode and I'm just gonna move this back. I'm gonna move this really far back and this is gonna be the start of our backdrop. And then I can simply hold shift and move this up and we got a nice backdrop. Now, what I typically do, I don't add too many subdivisions, but what I wanna do is shift, right click, and we can do a bevel edge. And with this bevel edge, I wanna go ahead and just give this three segments. Something like this will work. Now, if I go ahead and hit Q and hit three, we can see that our backdrop stays uh, planar and then starts to go out uh, into the back and we can move and position this however we need to um, later on right so if I want to make this wider I can just kind of scale this out like so. so as you can see we can just scale it out like so and I can maybe move these vertices back so a nice and simple backdrop for our character all right and I will go ahead and make sure to move this up forward so this holds uh, the way that we need it. You can of course right click add multi cut and then just kind of add one right here in the middle uh, like so just to kind of help with that smoothness. But we're not going to spend too long on this. Let's move on to cameras. So now that we have our backdrop set up, let's go ahead and set up a camera. So what we want to do is I'll just go to panels and perspective and new. All right, so now you can see I'm in perspective one. That's the new camera. I'll go ahead and just call this render cam. Okay, so with this being our render cam, the first thing I, I typically do is go ahead and set up the resolution gate. So now we can see exactly what we need to see. And then we're gonna frame our character. There's not gonna be anything too crazy. We won't be using very physical camera for this um, as we're just using simple lights. All right, so now that I have this, I will go ahead and move the plane down for our backdrop and then maybe jump to the side here and just make sure that it is just barely clipping the bottom of the plane. All right, and then now that we have this positioned, the next thing I want to do is hit Control A for Attribute Editor and pop up the uh, camera settings. So you can see we have render cam or if you don't have anything selected you can also hit the camera attributes icon right over here. Now whenever I'm doing renders like this I typically increase our focal length okay to something like 50 or 55. What that does is it minimizes or lowers the amount of distortion on our model and focal length about 50 or I would say 45 to 55 is typically what your natural eye sees. So that's a little bit easier uh, for people to view at, all right? Unless we're doing landscape shots or environment shots, you'd want this uh, to be about 50 because landscape and environments can be about you know 20 to 30, if not lower. You can go ahead and adjust your camera uh, clipping planes if you see some clipping, but all in all, we should be ready to go. I like to use this right here, which is our field chart, and I just use this to center and kind of frame our character and maybe zoom out because we can see that the hammer is going to kind of clip here. So something like this should be fine. Once we're happy with this, once we got it all centered and aligned, I will go ahead and disable the field chart and we can always lock our camera. I always recommend going to view bookmarks, edit bookmarks, and then you'll get this window and just do a new bookmark. So just in case you disable lock and you accidentally move your render cam, you can simply go to view bookmarks and camera view. So you always have that. 
All right. So now that we've set up our backdrop, well, we can go ahead and maybe move this up, right? Now we can see if we need to widen it or lengthen it uh, as needed. Now let's set up V-Ray. All right. So what we want to do is jump to our render settings. And you can see that we're using default Arnold. So we're going to switch that right over to V-Ray. So this is a complete fresh scene. And then I'm going to keep it at half 1080. So HD by 540. And then I'm going to go ahead and jump to our render settings. We'll leave it at progressive for right now. And we're going to go to GI and we're going to turn on our GI. And if you're using V-Ray Next 2.2, which is what I'm using, you'll have these settings. Otherwise, you'll just have brute force. But I'm going to go ahead and switch this to Iridian's map. And all I'm going to do is just lower our GI settings to low. And then subdivs for light cache to 500. I'm just doing this so I can iterate and work faster. Okay. So now that I have that, we want to go ahead and create our lights. So what I'm going to do is set this panel layout to dual panel layout. I'm going to switch this panel here to render cam. And I'm going to switch this one hold by holding spacebar to perspective. So now I can move around in this view here while seeing this fixed camera view. All right. Now, of course, if we go ahead and render, we're just going to get a simple black screen. So what we need to do, of course, is to go ahead and add a light. So we're going to use a nice series of V-Ray rectangle lights. So I went ahead and just created a V-Ray rectangle light by hitting this icon here in the shelf. And then I'm going to move this up and out so we can see it. And we'll actually move this over. And what I want to do is just really really increase the size of this. All right. I'm going to go ahead and increase this to about a size of 150 by 25. So you can see that this is a fairly large wide light. Now, whenever you're doing renders, I'm going for a nice soft lighting here. And that's typically going to give us softer shadows, which is exactly what we want. And if you want to make sure like not to bump into the camera, you can select your camera icon. You can see uh, my character is to scale. He's about four feet tall, um, around mid hundred centimeters. And you can go to the locator and bump this locator up by like 25. So we can see our render cam in here. So that's great. So now that we have this light here, we can go ahead and kind of just move it back. And what this is going to be, we can call this V-Ray rectangle light. And then I can just call this key. All right. This is going to be the key light and your key light is typically behind your camera. Now it doesn't need to be perfectly aligned and at the same angle. And frankly, you can even set it at a nice rotation just to give it some a little bit of uh, difference. OK, so with that, we'll go ahead now and see what we got. So this is the first light that we created. And I, of course, need to make sure that I switch over to the render cam because we're too far away from our render. And there we go. So we can see what we have so far. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Um, as far as we can see what we need to see, we can see all the textures coming through, we can see the light, and we have nice soft uh, initial lighting with this. So what I wanna do, of course, is since we're not using displacement nodes or anything, I wanna go ahead and just subdivide this plane. So what I want to do with that is I'll just go to edit, delete by type, history. So I delete all the history in the channel box. I can then go to shift right click and then just do a smooth. And we can give this a smooth of about two iterations or two, two divisions. All right. So that's going to give us something nice. And then we, of course, need to give this a V-Ray material. So I'm going to go ahead and do a new material. And we can see that I can go to V-Ray and I can just do a simple V-Ray material. And in this V-Ray material, it's just going to be a simple clay material. And I'm going to just go with kind of this light blue material that's a little bit desaturated uh, to help the character pop off of it. Once we have that, you can see if we go ahead and increase the reflection color quite a bit and then lower the glossiness so that'll make it uh, less shiny so we drop it down to maybe about five six it's now going to start catching light so we can see our character is all set up and ready to go so we need to make sure our backdrop looks a little bit better so i'll go ahead and let this render out now we get something like 
this. All right, so, so far so good. But what we need to do is things are still a little bit dark. So I'm going to add some more lights. So I'm using a nice, simple, the tried and true kind of three point lighting set setup. All right. So I can take this light, which you can already see, I called key. And then if I go ahead and duplicate it now, I can go ahead and start to move this and position this uh, at different parts of our uh, environment here. So you can see, I'm going to just go ahead and just kind of position it where it's filling the light of the character. Okay, so we can maybe come over here and maybe angle it a little bit more. Now this is typically at a much lower intensity, right? Because we can see that our key light here is at about a, an intensity of 30. And we can see in our render that it's still pretty dim. I want to bump that up to about 45, all right? So 45 intensity multiplier, and then our fill light here can stay at 30, but we'll see if we need to turn that down a little bit. So with that, let's go ahead and do another render, and let's see what we're looking at. So that's going to go ahead and do its thing, and great. So we're already starting to look a lot a lot better. We have some nice light. Now we're, we've got some nice highlights on our character that we didn't have before. And I'm actually going to go ahead and we can stop this and show some history. So we can kind of see the difference between the two. Adding that fill light is really adding these nice highlights in on our character. And then also increasing that main key light is giving us that nice direct lighting. We want to make sure to just bring out as much detail as we possibly can on our character with, you know, just a core set of lights. So now that we have this here, and I'm going to call this one fill. All right. And if this is starting to get too bright, we can, of course, drop that to about an intensity of multiplier of 25. And then what we're lacking here is we can see that we're getting a little bit flat on the other side, on the left side of the character or looking at it from the right side. All right. What I want to do now is add what's called a rim light. Now, rim light is going to give us, is going to help bring this character off of this background. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I hit Control D for duplicate, and then I'll go ahead and move it. I'm going to go ahead and again position this right on the other side. But this time again, like I said, it's going to be a little bit lower here. So it's going to be more in line with the character. And it's going to come a little bit more from behind. And we'll move this back a little bit. And it might come in view here. Now, it's going to be right out of view. Now, if sometimes you, you run into this instance, let's say we'll leave it right here. And we go ahead and do a render. We can actually see now that the light is showing up in the actual render, which we don't want. So what I'm going to do is stop this. I'm going to turn on IPR and IPR is going to allow us to iterate and move faster. And I did that by hitting this little teapot here and you can see it had a little play icon and then we can use this interactive rendering. And this is great for iterating and making a lot of updates uh, very fast. So I want to select the light here and we're going to call this one rim. And once we create that as, or call that the rim light, go down to your attribute ad editor with control A, hit options, and you can see invisible. Enable invisible, and there you go. Now it won't show up in your render. It is of course a little bit too close, so what I can do now is simply move this where it's not in, as powerful or, or close to being in the shot. And then now we can see what this is doing. So like I said, we're adding, we're adding this in here as a rim light. And what we can do is if you want, you can also make this a little bit larger, right? So these are just long rectangular lights. Let's say we bump this up so it's a little bit um, thicker here or taller. And we can see what, what that is doing to our renders. And we're using an intensity multiplier of about 25. So you can see. We're getting this nice now highlights and rim effect on our character, and it's bringing him off of the environment. All right, so we can maybe tweak 
work with this a little bit. Um, maybe increase the intensity. So we're at 25V and then intensity maybe is a little bit higher because we like this effect that we got that we got going on. All in all, I'm really happy with how this is looking. We can maybe even move this and bring this in a little bit closer just to kind of balance out the lighting between the two sides, right? If we feel that that lighting is a bit too strong here on the environment, we can lift it a little bit more off the ground and then bring it in a little bit closer. So we get something like that. All right. So again, depending on what you want, in this case, you can see now we're getting nice highlights. The character is popping off the ground. We have this nice, almost vignetting effect where it's kind of darker off to the corners and the character is very well illuminated, very well balanced. There's nothing too hot um, and everything is overall looking good. Now, along with messing with the size, position and intensity of the lighting, the other thing that I like to do is typically give it a little bit of a temperature. So I change color mode of our lights to temperature and then you can see light color uh, is disabled and I would combine both warm and cool colors. So if our key light is going to be kind of the main light source, so I'll go ahead and hit temperature here. And actually, this is a good time to jump to our light lister. So I go to V-Ray light lister. You can see that we have that here and we can enable temperature here. By increasing the key light here, I'm gonna go ahead and maybe type in 8500 Kelvin, and you can see it starts to give us a little bit of a blue tint. And then our fill light can also be that 8500, so a little bit of a cooler light. And then we can have our rim light be that nice warm light coming in from the back, all right? So again, if we take a look at our lights here, we can see we have key and fill and then our rim light is warm. So it's it's cooler light and then warm light. And that just adds a lot of visual interest to our renders and looks a lot better than just having, you know, neutral, solid, or pure white light, all right? So we went ahead and kind of change the temperature and let's see what that does. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that render and there you go. So just by adding a little bit of temperature to our lights and color, we get something that looks, again, visually more interesting. So again, warm light coming here from the rim, and our key light and our uh, fill light are both a little bit warm, uh, excuse me, cool, and it's transitioning between the two. So really nice, and again, adds visual interest. If we kind of look at this between the two, that is the, that is the difference here, right? So it looks quite a bit different, um, different in the sense that it looks better in my opinion. All right, so with that, let's move on to the next part. So I like where I'm at with the lighting, a nice, you know, you really can't go wrong with this three point lighting setup for your characters. So what I'm gonna do is just go ahead and stop that or stop the IPR render. And then we're gonna go ahead now and create or animate a turntable. So I'll go ahead and group these up select these in the outliner, and we're just gonna call these lights. And then we have our geo over here. Now, what I typically do for a turntable, right? If you're doing stills, this is fine, but we wanna actually rotate this character to create a turntable. So create, go to create, and then you can see we have locator. I typically use a locator, and I, I just call this turntable anim, underscore anim. And then I drop this inside of my geo group. Then I take the platform, my hammer, which is position for rotation or whatever it needs to be, and then my character, and I can drop that inside this turntable anim. Then you can see now I can rotate this locator. Now, what I wanna do is jump to my channel box editor, and we can see that we wanna be rotating in the Y. So if I right click, and I do key selected right here on the Y, we wanna go ahead and give this a lot more uh, frames. So I'm gonna open up my time configuration and then I'm gonna hit time slider and you can see that we have play every frame. What I want this to be is 30 frames times one. Then I want the frame rate to also be 30 frames. By default, this is set to 24, but you can verify that that is set to 30. 
And the main reason we're doing that is to give us more frames so we have a more fluid animation. You can, of course, render out 60 frames per second if you have a machine that can handle that. So now that we have that, I want to go ahead and give myself enough frames. So I typically recommend at least 10 seconds for a complete turntable. So that means let's go ahead and just type 300 down here underneath the time slider. And we're going to move this all the way to 300. And then so we have this now and we can rotate this a nice clean 360 degrees. And then you can go ahead and key select it. All right. Now you can, of course, do this at like 359, 358. And then what because what that's going to do is if I go ahead now and let this run, so we'll let this go and I'm almost clipping there. So I might move the camera a little bit back. You can see that it slows up and slows down. This is entirely up to you. I don't mind it either way. Um, because you can con you know, continue to let it loop even like this and it slows down really at the focal point of the character, which is the front. All right. Now, if you want to change this and you want to seamlessly loop, you go and select your turntable anim locator that we animated or whatever you have your keyframes on. And then we go to windows and then we go to animation editors, graph editor. Here you can see that we have the curves. All you want to do is just click drag, marquee select, and then set this to linear, which is this icon right here. What linear does is it removes any curves and interpolations. And we can go ahead now and play that. And you should see that it should seamlessly loop. And it stays at a constant speed from beginning to end. Now, again, this is entirely up to you. But I just wanted to make sure that I showed you this. You can see that there's an ever so slight jump there. That's because the last frame and the first frame are the same. So a lot of times I just leave it and just remove that frame when I render or composite, or I just adjust the keyframes. But for the sake of this, I'm gonna keep this. So I'll undo that a couple times, and we're gonna keep the curves on. All right, so that's how you set up that turntable there. And like I said, what I want to do at that last bit here is uh, unlock my camera, move him back just a little bit, drop it down, I mean, we still want to make sure that our character is still the focal point. And then if I rotate, you can see that I got enough, just in case you had a title bar or something, you want to make sure that you're good there. You can always use this. Um, we have the field chart. You have film gate or resolution gate, or you have safe title. So safe titles like, hey, if you want, if you're going to be having something of a top or border here, you can use that. So you can definitely have that. Uh, a lot of times, I tip basically work for, with safe action. Safe action here, which is this icon here, just make sure that I'm not uh, going too far out. So I think this is fine here. And we can keep him, make sure he's nice and centered. But there we go. And like I said, we can lock this camera. And then we can go ahead back to our bookmarks and go ahead and hit delete and the new bookmark. Now, once you're happy with all that, right? We have to keep in mind, we created an animation and well, now I want to animate it, right? So you have to make sure to go to the render settings, which I hit by this icon over here and go to animation and then animation disabled. Now we go ahead and do standard and then we tell it, hey, start frame one, end frame 300 and then by frame one, of course, and then it's going to go ahead and bake this out here. It's going to go ahead and save all your renders in the images folder in your Maya project, which means that you go to file, set project, and then you set this project to wherever that you need. In this case, it's this mine is this Maya folder here, and then it's going to save it right here. And then inside this images folder, that's where it's going to drop everything once it actually goes to render. So, I mean, I didn't change anything. It's the same folder. Once that is done, we can finally go to rendering and then go to render, batch render. Now this will go ahead and start rendering it out. And keep in mind that this settings doesn't work, which is a little bit irritating because a lot of people think that, hey, render V-Ray does not provide batch rendered options. Perfect. 
that makes sense, but it doesn't start the render. So you gotta make sure to go to render, batch render, and then it's gonna go ahead. I'm getting a Windows firewall uh, alert, which is fine. You just say allow access. And it's gonna go ahead and start rendering. And then let me go ahead and let a few frames run. Now, I almost forgot, is once you set the animation, you have to make sure to set renderable cameras. Otherwise, it's going to render the wrong camera. In this case, it would render our perspective camera. So you change this to render cam. And I always recommend, you know, hey, do a low res sample. So do something like 540 with low um, settings here and let it run to make sure there's no issues. And if everything looks good, great, then you can go ahead and increase to final. And for final resolution, I go typically bucket and I, incre I decrease the render region division. So we have more buckets rendering. Threshold is fine at 0.01, uh, maybe even a little bit high because I will go ahead and actually use denoiser for to clean up a lot of that noise, which will save time in rendering. So we'll have that there. And we have our GI, and I would crank this up to you know medium or high for irradiance map, and then crank up light cache back up to a thousand or fifteen hundred, uh, just to kind of crank that all up at a much higher to get a much higher detailed uh, render. So again, once you have all these settings, which are um, you know we can also say you know character render, character underscore render. And that will also render it uh, with a specific name. So we name it, we tell it how many frames to render, we tell it what camera to render, what resolution, and then we go ahead and give this final settings. Always use bucket for final renders, not progressive, and then increase your GI settings. So now that I've done that, you can go ahead now and just simply hit batch render. Again, not hitting options, just batch render. And we'll let that go for a few frames. Okay, so the render is continuing to go frame by frame. You can see it down here. It lets you know the percent percentage of each frame, where it is in the GI, where it is in the overall render, and it goes ahead and uh, outputs that. I'm gonna just go ahead and cancel that. And we can now go to cancel batch render because I've already got a few frames. And it says, do you wish to cancel? Yes. And then once that's done, I can drag this over here. And now we can see we have our character render rendered at full 1080 and we have the effects result in denoise i just grab either one of those because this is the non denoised version which i mean we're not doing anything crazy um but here he is so you can see the denoise version cleans up a little bit uh and everything's looking really good so i'm really happy with uh, how he turned out and everything looks fine so i can go ahead now and um move on to the next part. So hopefully you found this helpful. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to use render setup. So now that you have this set up with V-Rain lighting, now we can use my render setup to render out ambient occlusion, clay pass, wireframe pass, and have all that ready to go for our portfolios. So uh, as always, if you found this helpful, like and subscribe is always appreciated, and thanks for watching. Thanks, bye.